In this tutorial we're going to look a little more at objects and creating objects and also moving them and snapping them. So to create an object you can either go to the create menu, the drop down here, or the command panel, your first tab, the create tab, and then we'll just start with standard primitives. I can select a box and make a box, um, and then select a sphere, let's make a sphere. Um, and you can see right now I don't have my edge faces on, so if I go to default shading, I can turn on my edged faces, and that will show me the subdivision on the object. It doesn't really matter for a scene this size, but if I'm dealing with a scene that, say, has a thousand trees, and I have a lot of facets on each of the trees, it's really going to bog down the machine. So you want to make sure you have only the number of facets that you need. Um, an example for that, like if I select the sphere and go to the Modify tab, so again the Select tool is up here, select the object, go to the Modify tab, the second tab here. If I reduce the number of segments, you can see if I reduce it too far, the object becomes really faceted and it will render that way. So you want to make sure you have enough segments that it looks sphere-like um, and you don't really notice that kind of edge condition. But if you have too many, again, and your scene is really big, it can really bog down your machine. So you kind of want to find a balance between those two. Um, let's go ahead and create some more objects. We could even try some uh, an extended primitive, maybe make like a torus knot here, for example. And again, most of these objects you click with your left mouse, let go, and then click again, and that will create the object. And just practice that and you'll become familiar with it. But again, whenever you make an object, you can always select any of these objects, go to the Modify tab, and change parameters of them at any time. So they all have different sets of parameters based on the kind of object they are. So um, this list will change based on the object that's selected. Um, so the next thing we can do is move, rotate, and scale these objects. So if we go up here to the um, toolbar, the first one is the move tool. And if I select that, you'll get this little gizmo that shows up. And the gizmo has a Z, an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. So if I hover over one of these, I can drag it in that x-axis, or in the y-axis, or in the z-axis. If I hover over the middle of two of them, I can drag it in the X and Y simultaneously, for, or X and Z simultaneously. Or if I go right in the middle, I can drag it in all three directions. So that's a really nice way to just quickly move objects uh, around your scene. You'll notice as I'm changing and moving that, these numbers down here are changing. And right now, these numbers correspond to where that pivot's located in relation to the 0, 0, 0 of the XY grid. So right now, it's six feet over in the X direction, uh, negative two feet in the Y, and then three inches vertically. So if I move that more vertically, you can see that uh, that Z number will change. Um, if you want to move something, you can actually type in down here, like if I want something to be in the zero of my scene, I could type in zero, enter. Um, let's say I want it negative eight feet, I could type that in, and then you can you know change this, let's say, to like three feet. And so that, again, always corresponds to the pivot location in, cor in relation to the 0, 0, 0 of the grid, the original grid. If you hit this button here, it'll zero everything out. So every time I move, it'll be from its current location. So if I want to move two feet vertically, I can just type in one, uh, two feet, enter, and it'll move it two feet up from where it currently is. If I deselect it, it goes back to this coordinate system where it's referencing the 0, 0, 0 of the grid. So that's a really useful way of just moving and rotating um, accurately instead of just kind of doing it uh, dynamically on the screen. If I hit rotate, I can rotate an object. works very similar in a very similar way. I can rotate just on one axis, or if I hover over you know, two of the axes, um, you can rotate in two directions. Um, with the snaps, if I turn on the, the rotate snap, I can make sure I rotate only f in five degree intervals. You can see it changing down here at the bottom, always in five degree increments. If I turn that off, it'll be uh, not in five degrees. So it'll be very precise to two decimal places. But again, you can always type in values. So if I want to rotate it back to zero, 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 I can type those values in down here. The next one is the scale, and so scale works the same way pretty much. You just drag on these arms. You can hover over two arms to scale in two dimensions, or you can select in the middle to scale in all three dimensions. And again, you can always type in these values down here. The other thing you might need to do is snap. So if I select my object snap, which is this one, right click, you can actually snap these to different um, you know, object snap um, settings. So right now if I have endpoint and midpoint, for example, 
and I go to my move tool and make sure my my snap is highlighted there I can um, hover over this vertice or this endpoint for example and I could drag it and snap it to let's say that that vertice on that surface so um, I would turn snaps on only if you're trying to snap because if you are trying to just move it it's going to get really confused so I would turn off snaps if I'm just moving it without snapping um, but turn it on if you really want to be really precise and snap one thing to another thing and again that's highlighted uh, either on or off by clicking on it.